it's funny how an old building like this, you know, in complete disrepair, can be just easily ignored. But this is the control tower for one of the most important RAF bases and airfields in the Second World War. You wouldn't know it now, would you? <laughs> it's just falling apart. But this control tower was once, you know, the staging post of the Battle of Britain. You know, there were Spitfires and other um, RAF planes continuously coming in and out of this airfield. And now look at it. But it's still a bit of history, you know, and it's um, in, in this project that I'm doing. It's a really important defensive part of our landscape. You know, it's so quiet now, but I love to just spend a bit of time just imagining what it must have been like here during the Second World War. You would have had an absolute hive of activity with planes landing, taking off all the time, going on raids. You would have had all the ground staff here and the, um, the whole RAF base of you know, the activity that would have been um, going into making this place work. Um, it would have been so busy and I imagine very loud at times. And yet now it's just peaceful and just got this control tower um, sitting in the middle of a field. Um, but actually in 1940, this whole area, this airfield became an actual um, place of battle where it was attacked by the Luftwaffe and these Stuka dive bombers um, killed 14 ground staff and six civilians and destroyed a lot of the base and aircrafts. Um, so that had to all be rebuilt and um, prepared again so that it could become an active base and it became um, one of the you know really most important bases of the Battle of Britain. The most successful fighter pilot based at RAF Tangmere was a man called Douglas Bader and he had an incredible story he actually lost both of his legs in a crash during the um, pre-war um, in, a, in a plane crash. And then he wasn't allowed to fly anymore, um, even though he wanted to. But then when the war began, he was allowed to come back and become a fighter pilot again. Um, and he, he then spent um, the first part of the war being based here, where he had 20 aerial victories. So he was in, you know, the most successful pilot from this base. Um, but he was shot down over German occupied France and was captured and then he tried to escape several times and in the end he was sent to Kolditz Castle which was a prisoner of war camp um, in Germany and he spent the rest of the war there um, before he was released in 1945 and then at some point he becomes Sir Douglas Bader for his incredible bravery and those 20 aerial victories. Another fascinating fact about this place is that it was actually used by the SOE. They were the Special Operations Executive um, and they were being flown from here into occupied France to help the French resistance. So this base had a real use. It was such an important place during the Second World War. So just by coming here to a farmer's field to find a derelict control tower that you know was once such a busy place but now just this empty quiet field but the whole process of coming here to find out more and to photograph it and to visit has been so fascinating for me because attached to this field was and where I am now where I'm parked up now is a a small museum where some volunteers are basically showing what it was like to be here and they're showing some of the planes, showing the Spitfire and really Im impressively showing that tiny plane that was used by the Special Operations Executive and they would 
you know, have to fly in by compass because there was no radio. They didn't want to be um, found by the um, by the, uh, the Germans. They basically would would fly out um, from here with the spies into occupied France, and they would um, literally land, drop them off, pick up those who were being smuggled out, and get them back um, here um, that same night. And you know, all that happened here. You know, I'm standing in that field and just thinking, well, this is like just an empty field with you know, a landing strip and um, a, uh, an old control tower. But this whole place was, you know, the hub where they were, um, all the communications and all of the, um, you know, the spy work was all coming out from, from here as well as the Battle of Britain. And so, you know, just a fascinating place to come to, just to dig a little bit deeper, um, as well as to take those photographs um, of that control tower. So yeah, really amazing. Mm -hmm.